Hi guys, today we are going to be assembling the TMC 2100 uh, silent step sticks as well as the silent step stick protectors. I didn't see any documentation on how to do these so I thought I might as well make a short video about how exactly to assemble these. So you're going to need a soldering iron. These do not come pre-soldered so that's one thing you have to do yourself. Um, you're going to need, what is this, solder. You're going to need heat sinks. It doesn't come with heat sinks. You're also going to need a pair, let me go grab it, a pair of flush cut shears. Um, flush cut shears. I also have a breadboard here. This is just to help me with soldering. So you're going to take, I'm going to, this is the protector. I'm going to assemble this one first. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about, oh, shoot, um, I'm going to try to only touch this PCB board by the corners, by the edges. Uh, okay. So that's, that's what you get in the protector. You get these long ones, and then you get, uh... The, the actual board itself. I know I just touched it, not by the corners, but whatever. Uh, I'm also going to open up the silent step stick, the TMC 2100 driver. Uh, these are one of the most popular boards. They're called the silent step sticks because they promise um, essentially running your motors completely silently which I have experienced, they're completely quiet. Except for the fact that there's this wine, and next week I'll hopefully be able to, I've been talking with the manufacturer of these, and hopefully I'll be able to make a video about how to get rid of that wine, which basically entails running this off of 24 volts. But we'll get to that a little later. Okay, so what, what you're, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take two of these. You're going to want five little little knobs of separation. I guess, I don't know what they're called. Technical term. Knobs. Um, and then you're going to take these and you're going to just rest them gently on there. Like that. And then you're going to take this and we're going to take the side with all these black components here and we're going to turn it the other direction, so like that. So we're gonna, it's kind of difficult to get it on there, but get it on there. Um, and then you want to just take a step back and you want to look at it from a low angle and you just want to make sure that it's, it's square on there. Then we're going to come along with your soldering iron and solder, and we're going to solder these pins. I'm using a relatively thin solder, a one millimeter solder, but whatever you prefer. This came with my soldering iron, so we're just going to do this. One tip that I have picked up when soldering is to solder these pins in a random order so you don't overheat your board in one area and burn your components. I know I totally didn't do that in a random order, but it's just because I'm thinking about what I have to say next. I hope I didn't fry my board. and probably didn't, though. You shouldn't spend longer than two seconds on each pin. If you spend longer than that, you risk overheating your board. That's another thing that I've, I've picked up. Alright, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to remove one of your strips and you're gonna cut one pin off oh shoot that just flew somewhere you want to make sure these two don't f and, and and then you're gonna cut two pins off and you want to make sure these don't fly fly to the wind I gotta find that so now you have a set of five and a set of two and you're going to place 
two right there. You're gonna place two right there. You're gonna place the other five right there. Oh shoot. You wanna make sure they're lined up with the other ones on the other side. And you wanna make sure you, you've got this this five little little thingies of separation. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your step stick down, and you're gonna put the star facing up and away from the other side, or away from these two pins. And so what you'll be left with is a hole at GF2. And so next week, hopefully, I'll be removing this VM pen, which is the voltage to the motor, and turning it upside down, and then plugging 24 volt into that, and that should make it completely silent, because it sounds like a, like a broken hearing aid right now. So if you, you are running a 12 volt system, you may want to consider doing that mod. It may not get to you, but it got to me really quickly. Okay, so there's your, your board all soldered up. And so when you install this, what you're gonna do is you're going to make sure, you'll, you'll notice there's three holes. Align those three holes, and you should be in business just like that. All right, um, I got these heat sinks off of Amazon. They're too small in my opinion, so I'm gonna go ahead and use two. Um, it's really hard to find heat sinks for this for stepper stepper motors. One thing that I did consider is actually buying a pack of A two A two nine four Pololo drivers um, that come with the heat sinks. So you may want to consider that as an option. But I kind of lucked out and I found some. Um, I did note that these come with sticky pads on the back. I actually bought sticky pads because I didn't know that. Just when in doubt, check with your manufacturer. So what we're aiming to do here when we put those on there is you'll notice there's kind of a grill, a gold grill of holes. And that is actually the the driver on the other side. And that's that's the way it cools. Is I think it like pipes heat up those holes, but again, I'm, I'm not a professional anything, actually. All I know is, is that it's, it's better when it's cooled from the top, or the bottom, whichever way you look at it. So there you go. Um, the next thing you, you're going to want to do is adjust it in your firmware. Um, I'm not going to actually show you how to do that today. Um, however, there is a guide on how to uh, adjust your firmware settings that I'll link in the description. That is, it's quite detailed and it helped me get my printer up and running. Um, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to adjust your driver. And I'm not going to show you that on my board because it's, it's busy in there because it's a working board. But I will show you how you want to do it. And that is taking a voltmeter and these things are relatively cheap and you're gonna take one side your red side and you're gonna stick it right in that hole and you're gonna take the other side and you're gonna put it on that pin this this pin right right there and you're just gonna put it there and you wanna make that readout at like obviously when this is plugged into your board and you're gonna wanna make that readout like I don't know, 0.8 volts, 0.6 volts. Check with the manufacturer of your motors to see to see how many how many volts you should pump through there. The guide that I'm going to link in the description says uh, point, 0.8, I think. So I've just been doing 0.8, and it works. It, they they work perfect. They're phenomenal drivers, um, except for the one, which I'll be able to show you. 
how to fix in the coming weeks. Thanks guys.